So here we are in the final video in compositing Octane renders in Fusion. We are going to add a little bit of compositing sweeteners at the end of the project. Uh, we will have a little heat distortion being added to the end of this thing. We're going to add some chromatic aberration, some vignetting, some film grain, and a final show let that we're going to kind of grade to. So let's go ahead and get started with the heat distortion. So this node was uh, gotten on Reactor. If you scroll down to the heat distortion plugin right here, Emilio Sapia, uh, all of this guy's stuff is really good. So I recommend grabbing all of the ones that he has. Fantastic. So please go ahead and grab that. Uh, heat distortion. It's really, really simple plugin. I'm just going to show it right here so it adds blurs it adds heat and adds mask controls to the area so what i do is i'll crank up the density i'll crank up the detail on all of this stuff and add some contrast maybe a little brightness and get some good distortion going decrease the increase the scale yeah there we go and yeah that's looking pretty good so we have that set now we need to just mask the area that we're going in so I'm just gonna grab this ellipse tool and outside of the plugin, we can just kind of line it up a little bit. I can shrink down the width and the height, and I'm actually gonna give it a little bit of an angle, kind of like that. And then I can even soften the edge. And if we just look at it right here, we can see how soft we're making that edge. Okay, so let's go ahead and add it into the masked area. And boom, there we go. There's on and off, and it adds quite a bit to it. It's actually looking really good. Big fan of that. All right, let's go ahead and just throw that into the rest of the composite. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is add chromatic aberration, and that's really simple to do. So I'm just gonna add a little pipe doodad right there. We're gonna grab a channel boolean which basically allows us to do different operations to two inputs. Um, and all we're gonna do for this is just isolate different channels. So right now I'm going to hit, um, for the red channel, we want the red background. And then for the green and for the blue, we're going to choose black. And that isolated the red channel. So let's go ahead and copy and paste. And we're going to do the same thing, except the red channel is going to be black, and then the green channel is going to be green background. And now we can check that is the green channel. Copy and paste. We can do black for the green, and then background blue. And now we have all three channels combined right here. And what we're going to do is actually merge them back together. So let's go ahead and merge the top parts together by adding a merge node. I'm actually going to extend this out a little bit. And the operation that we're gonna do is just burn in. And so now we can see that's what it looks like combined. And we're gonna do the same thing right here where we're just burning it in. And so now our image looks exactly the same as it does over there, perfect. So what we're gonna do is add this thing called lens distortion so that the very edges get a little funky, little funky uh, chromatic aberration to it. So what we're gonna do is in this red channel piping that we have, I'm going to add lens distort and we can go ahead and look at our final image here and check to see what's going to happen. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase the distortion a little bit. And now, well, if I extend it too much, you can definitely see 
the chromatic aberration. So let's go ahead and dial that down quite a bit just to our liking. Every image in the world has chromatic aberration. If it's shot on a real camera, every image has chromatic aberration. That's just how it is whenever you have, when you use real life imperfect objects for capturing an image, which is fine. I mean, some cameras have it more than others. Um, so yeah, and that just looks way too much over here. So I'm just gonna keep it chill, keep it simple like that. That's good. All right. Okay. That's looking really good. So the next thing we're going to do is actually add a little bit of film halation. Well, how do we do that? I'm going to do another organizing dot right here, and then I'm going to choose a color curves. So what you need to do when affecting the color curves, we're just going to isolate the highlights. What you need to do is make sure you uncheck alpha because that can be that can be annoying to accidentally forget to do. <laughs> Trust me. So we're gonna grab that top end. Sometimes this guy gets a little funky. We're just gonna bring the top end down, add a little blip right there near the end, and then bring that up. Okay, so we've isolated that area. Now we're gonna add a blur. And this is going to just be a red channel blur. So we can go ahead, increase the size a little bit. You can see how intense that can get. And now I'm actually going to use our position volume mask. I'm gonna go ahead and pick right there to be where we want it to be. I'm going to adjust my scale. So we're gonna have just like that. Add some depth. Um, okay, that looks good. Let's go ahead and do the mask only. And let's see if we can adjust some of this. There we go. So now we just have that mask set. So let's grab it and move it over here. And we're going to affect just a specific area. So what we need to do is actually create a matte control and put that in here so that we're just isolating that specific area. And we're going to pipe that output into the garbage mat. And so we can see it's inverted and we actually need to invert the mask. There we go. So now we have our halation that has been added and we just need to merge it back on top of the project. And we just burn in, alpha gain down, and we can adjust the blending that we have with it. And it looks like it's just a bit too extreme. So we can do something simple like that. I can even turn down the blend right here and there. <coughs> That's looking pretty good to me. Now let's go ahead and add a vignette to this image. So what we're going to do, and if we haven't done it before, it's probably good to do it now. Uh, we're going to change our frame format. So uh, it's pretty simple. Just go into file preferences, frame format, and then we're going to just match the resolution to our background here and boom. So now whenever I create a background, which is what we want, it's going to be the exact correct dimensions, which is great. And it's really simple. All we're doing right here is adding a ellipse to the background and we're going to make it the size of our vignette. So we'll do the width, do the height, soften it, and then invert it. And so boom, there we are. We have a little bit of, an, of a vignette and I'm just going to turn the blend down just to make it 
look okay. You can enable and disable to see what it does. I think it's just a bit too much. Yeah, okay, there we go. That's looking good. So the next thing that we're gonna do is actually get into color correcting. And in order to do that, I have a show LUT that I have chosen for this uh, to make it, make it look better. So what I'm going to do is I need to change the color space out of linear into sRGB. So you use that with a gamut node. So I'm gonna show you right here. What we need to do is turn off the view LUT uh, and you just do that by toggling the little grid up here. So turn off the view LUT. And then we're gonna go to the output space and change that to sRGB. And now it looks exactly how it did before. It's just in the sRGB space now. And so we can take the LUT that I have gotten right here. We can pipe that in and it will work correctly. So here we are. And already there's a couple things I'm gonna to want to change. Uh, and the fact that we have done all of this compositing beforehand is just gonna make it easier. So I'm going to duplicate my tab. I'm going to put it there. That's gonna be our final output. And here we're going to search for um, a couple of things. I'm gonna look for the regular diffuse. I think I want this one and I'm going to add a color corrector. I'm going to add a tool to just isolate the grass right here. And then all we're going to do is make it just a bit more orangey. We can look right here to see what that has done. We don't need to make it too orangey. We can see uh, without and with. Let's go ahead and just increase that just a little bit. Yeah. And then I think I'm going to go over here and add a, a similar thing. Um, I'm just going to add a box, almost like a kind of graduated look. Do that. And then. I'm gonna soften the edge pretty good. And here I'm gonna also make it a little more orangey. Yeah. There we go. It's looking pretty, pretty okay. Let's actually take that saturation down just a touch. There we go. So now that we have a final show let we can grade against that and that's really useful and really good um, and so it looks like the final thing we're gonna want to do is add our chromatic uh, let's you know our at our at our film grain so here's the film grain we put it on after the LUT and wow that looks terrible <laughs> yeah that looks that looks really intense uh, we don't need it to be that intense so let's go ahead and take the size down. Let's take that strength way down. Too far, because we like to have a little bit in here. I'm gonna turn off the alpha multiply and the log processing. And there we can fine tune our stuff. I'm actually gonna go look right here. Yeah, our alpha's fine. So here we are adding some film grain just to touch it up a bit. I like take I like having really small fine film grain. And then the final thing I do is add a oop, not that is add a blur. Not sure what that was. Is add a final blur and it just be really really gentle. So 0.5 is going to be too much. Let's try 0.2. And let's look at the fine detail here. Maybe 0.3 we can see a little difference. Yeah. It's very subtle, but I like it. Okay, and then there we go. That is compositing an entire render out of 
Octane in Cinema 4D in Fusion. I really hope this helps uh, with whatever kind of rendering that you're doing. Um, compositing in a node-based workflow just works really well, and I am a huge fan of it. So I recommend you guys doing that, making that a part of your skill set because uh, it's just a much easier, much simpler way of working because there's no pre-composing that you have to do. Yeah, thank you so much for watching this. I uh, hope you enjoyed it and I uh, will see you guys in the next one.